This is part 47 of jQuery tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss how jQuery animation queues work. Let's understand this with an example. Notice here we've got two developments and we have several calls to animate method chain together. By default, these calls will be placed into a default queue and the name of that default queue is FX. Keep in mind, each HTML element will have its own queue. Since we have got two div elements here, there will be two such default queues. So with this code, there will be five calls to animate method placed in the queue of each div element. This means both the div elements, that is myDiv1 and myDiv2, may start to execute the first call to their respective animate method more or less at the same time. However, from the given queue, the queue methods are executed one after the other in series rather than executing all of them simultaneously in parallel. Let's look at this in action. Let's flip to Visual Studio. So I have this same code that we have seen on the slide here. If we view this page in the browser, this is how it looks like. Notice we have got a button and two developments. And to get this UI, this is the HTML that we need. So we have a button and the value on the button says start animation and we have got two developments. Notice each development has a class attribute set to my div class and this CSS class is present within the style section. So my div class is the name of the class and notice we are setting width to 150 pixels. So the width of each development is set to 150 pixels padding of 5 pixels, font size 18 pixels and we have a 1 pixel solid black border and opacity is set to 0.4. That is the reason why these developments are not clearly visible because we have set opacity to 0.4. We have set background color to red and font color to white. Okay, So this div class is applied to both the developments and that's why they look exactly the same. And then within our script section, we've got our ready function and we are finding the button by ID. So the ID of the start animation button is my button. And when we click that button, we want to call a function. Actually, when we click that button, that's when we want to animate both these developments. So when we click the button, we are calling a function. And within that function, we are finding both the developments, that is my div1 and my div2. And then notice we've got several calls to the animate function chain together. So the first animate function is going to animate the increase in width. So we are increasing the width of the div element from an initial width of 150 pixels to 500 pixels. And that increase is happening over a period of 1500 milliseconds, that is one and a half second. And then we are increasing the padding from 5 pixels to 20 pixels. Again, that's happening over a period of 1500 milliseconds. Similarly, we are increasing font size to 50, border width to 10, and opacity to 1. So when we set opacity to 1, then the div element should be clearly visible. right? And we are doing exactly the same thing even on div2 element. Right? So when we click the Start Animation button now, notice what's going to happen. You know, it increases the width and then, you know, the padding and then the font size, border width and finally opacity. So now notice the developments are clearly visible. But the important thing to keep in mind is that the executions are happening in sequence one after the other. Okay, they're not happening parallelly. So while the first animate method is being executed, the other calls to the animate method are placed in the queue and they are waiting to be executed. In fact, we can find the length of the queue. And to do that, we are going to make use of queue function. So basically, this queue function, you know, we can use that to queue a function, right, to place the function into that default queue. The name of that default queue is fx. So let's say we want to queue a function, an anonymous function. And what we want to do inside this fu function is find out the length of the queue and display that length within the console window, right? So to get the length of the queue, so I want to get the queue of this development. So I'm going to use this keyword to refer to that development. 
and then I'm going to call the queue function and the name of the queue is fx that's the name of the default queue and length pr property on that is going to give us the number of calls waiting in the queue to be executed right so what we want to do with that length we want to log it to the console so I'm going to use the log method so console.log we want to log the length so I'm going to append a string here let's call this queued calls equals whatever is the length of the queue alright so let's save the changes and let's go ahead and reload this page and look at this let's actually launch the browser developer tools by pressing F12 key we are on the console tab within the developer tools now look at this when we click start animation it starts executing the animations look at that it says queued calls equals 5 the important thing to notice here is look at this after the first animation you know the div1 element has stopped executing any more calls within the queue and first of all let's see why it says queued calls equals 5 now if you look at this code here so while this call to animate method is being executed the rest of the calls that is all these methods are queued you know they are waiting in that default queue to be executed one after the other right so at this point how many calls we have so this queue function is going to queue this function place this function into the queue as well so we have one two three four and five so that's the reason why we get queued calls equals five because there are five calls to be executed right and the reason it stops the animation after executing you know the first call to animate method is because when we queue a method to execute we also have to dequeue that explicitly and to dequeue that we have to we use dequeue method so I'm going to simply say dollar this dot dq so this is going to dq the method and the execution of the rest of the calls within the queue must continue so let's look at this in action let's also place another call to the queue at the end so let's get rid of this semicolon from there and paste it there put a semicolon so when this code is executed there is only one more function to execute in the queue that is this function which we are adding so this one should produce the queued calls count as one whereas this should produce the queued calls count as six because including this function we have six calls to be executed so let's save the changes reload this page and let's click start animation so the animation starts and look at that queued calls equals six and the animations continue and finally it should say queued calls equals one now let's see how to globally disable all animations for some reason let's say you know when I click a button turn off animations you know probably I want to turn off all the animations is it possible absolutely if you want to globally turn off animations um, you know we would either set dollar dot fx dot off equals true or jQuery dot fx dot off equals true keep in mind that fx is the name of the default queue okay j uh, dollar is the shortcut for jQuery so you can either say dollar or jQuery and then dot fx dot off equals true let's actually do this let's put in you know throw a checkbox onto the page turn off animations now if we check that box and then when we click start animation it should not do any animations you know it should increase the width padding font size etc all these properties without animations whereas if that is not checked that means we want animations so when we click the button we want all those you know CSS properties to be changed you know using animations let's see how to achieve that so first of all we need to get that UI that means we need a checkbox so let's go ahead and include a checkbox after the button so we want input let's give it an ID let's call this checkbox and type is going to be checkbox and let's specify the text as turn off animations 
and when we click the button we want to get the value you know whether if that checkbox is selected or not right so we want to find that checkbox by ID so let's use the ID selector so the ID is chkbox that's the ID of the checkbox and to get the value you know whether it is checked or not I'm going to use is method is and the selector here is going to be colon checked so what is this going to do this is going to return true if this checkbox is checked that is if this checkbox is checked then is colon checked is going to return true if it returns true then we want to turn off animations so to turn off animations globally we can use dollar dot fx dot off equals true or false okay so let's save the changes reload this page and look at this now at the moment turn off animations is not checked so when I click start animations it will do all the animations now let's go ahead and turn off let's actually reload this page check that box turn off animations and when we click start animation button look at that it doesn't do the animations anymore on the other hand you know when we run it without you know checking that box it will do the animations now at the moment the calls to these methods are being executed in sequence one by one right they are not executed simultaneously in parallel now let's say for some reason you want the calls um, to animate method to be executed simultaneously in parallel if that is the case then we can set this Q option to false right so when we set that Q option to false we're basically telling we don't want them to be executed in sequence one after another instead execute all of them simultaneously in parallel and to specify that option you know we are using this version of the animate method notice there are two versions of um, animate method you know one variation is where you know we are passing a JSON object with the CSS properties and values and then we can specify duration easing and complete we discussed this version of animate method in our previous video session we also have another variation where you know we specify the CSS properties and their values as a JSON object and we can specify the additional options that we want to pass to the animate method also using a JSON object that is using this options parameter and if you want to find out uh, you know the list of all additional options then visit this URL so when you visit that jQuery URL so notice this is the first variation of the animate method and this is the second variation and here are the list of options that we can pass to the animate method and we pass them as a JSON object right so we can specify duration um, easing whether you want to queue them or not right and we have several other options like that we have step we'll discuss that option in our next video session so now if you don't want these calls to be executed in sequence if you want all of them to be executed in parallel then use the second variation and set that queue option to false so what we can basically do is let me delete all of this I'm going to say here so that's the width property using a JSON object and I'm going to use another JSON object and you know I want to specify duration let's say duration is 1500 milliseconds and Q equals false okay similarly I mean Q colon false this is a JSON object right so similarly we have to do it for padding font size border width opacity so in the interest of time I have already typed the required HTML so I'm going to copy this and paste it right here so let's format this a bit so the same idea here padding and then we are saying duration Q equals false so for all the calls to animate method we are basically setting Q option to false right so let's do the same thing for the other development as well 
So now, since we have set Q option to false, all of these calls to the animate method will be executed in parallel, right? So let's look at them now. So let's reload this page. Look at that. When I say start animation, look at that. All of them happen within 1500 milliseconds. That is one and a half second. Now, an easier way to animate these multiple CSS properties simultaneously is to include all those CSS properties in a single JSON object. Now, there's no reason why you want to have multiple calls to animate methods. So all we are doing is you know, animating or increasing these CSS properties. We can include all those CSS properties in a single JSON object, and that's going to execute you know, or perform all those animations simultaneously in parallel. So let's look at that option. So if we have to do that, then we would do something like this. So I can simply say, so I want to increase width to 500 pixels. Similarly, you know, I want to increase padding to 20 pixels. So we specify padding and then we want to increase that to 20. Similarly, you know, we include font size, border width, opacity, etc. Again, within the interest of time, I have already typed the required code. So let's copy that and paste it right here. Okay. And let's say we want all these animations, you know, to be performed within 1500 milliseconds. We specify that using speed parameter. So let's do the same thing for the other development. Okay, so let's save the changes. Let's reload this page and look at that. It should work the same way. Thank you for listening and have a great day.